Who's singing? Katy Perry? You think she watches our channel? 100%, just for you. Hi, Katie. Wow. <laughs> You're watching Service Call, proudly produced by Tecmo and sponsored by Fortis HD. And once again, Rent One. Wow! In this episode, Cam is back to the excavator to finish her up. Everyone's doing something. Just cuddling the muffler. I'm really just twisting my arm. Gerald is going to show how reflow solutions work. We can flow it, test it, bake it, and then we can weld it back together. Keith is back and going to install a track adjuster and roller on a 20 ton excavator. If you really hate the next guy that takes it apart, you can use some green Loctite. <laughs> and Shay shows the demolition using that same 20 ton excavator from Rent One. Hello? It's your boy. Pretty much, she's running. I'm just putting the final drive cover on right now. Yeah, final drive's going on. All the little bits and bobs are going on. She's back together though, like in one piece. Fran is just about to drop the swing into place, finishing up the one final drive here. And uh, I think there's a couple of little things like grease fittings and some lines, like little grease lines, but it's all the little shit that you, you don't think about until after and then you're trying to find parts and Cause I gotta order up a grease line still. What the f <laughs> What a dumb spot for a fill plug. Like they knew they were gonna have a gear there. Why don't they just put a plug in the middle or like here? Oh. This one's done. That only took like three hours for me to do. I still gotta put the rest of those bolts in and torque it though. I like copper NECs for most things. There are times when it's not compatible with whatever you're doing. Like anything at the end of the day, do what the OEM recommends. 99% of the time, CAT recommends copper, eh? Yeah. yeah. Like on all the Rotec bolts, it was copper anti-seize. And uh, I don't know. There's three different kinds of anti-seize. Well, there's probably more than that, but that we see commonly. And that's like copper, the silver that makes you look like the fucking tin man. And then like nickel, which is not silver because the silver stuff's in a, an aluminum something or other type of anti-seize. That's why you see it turn white. That's why I don't like it, because it gets all kind of white and crusty. What are you working on right now? Just hanging out. Yeah, putting the rotary manifold back in and the swing motor. Lefty Lucy. Everyone's doing something. Just cuddling the muffler. I'm really just twisting my arm. It's gonna be the easiest rotary I've put in. There's no swing in the way. Perfect for these. Almost got a case ring in the brake line, and then we're all good. Pause, I'll be back. Hey, nice flange lock caps and plugs. I know I'm getting them back now. Finally, eh? Finally, I do like them. It's better than using a glove, better than a glove and a zip tie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my new torque wrench. It's the same as a uh, Snap-on or Mac or whatever. Precision Instruments. They make them for Snap-on and all those guys. It's a nice one, I like it. Oh shit, this one doesn't click. Oh fuck. Can we have your outrigger? I'm just kidding. Now it clicks. Now it, now I click. Get torqued. Get torqued, dork. Carson, what are you working on right now? You want to come help me torque this? I'm using Carson. You don't need them. I'm using Carson. You don't need them. I don't want to put this in. I don't know if you got enough weight to torque these. Do you? <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're small, dude. Oh, shit. You need more gravity in you. I try. It doesn't really work, though. Gotta eat more. I eat all the time. I eat out all the time. <sighs> what are these going to? 
No, 600. That means I weigh 600 pounds almost. No, it's, you weigh uh, 600 divided by four. So. What is that? Can you figure it out at home? Like 150 pounds? That's more than I weigh. Well, you're giving her a little bit of inertia too, so. Yeah, I'm about, What's inertia? I'm about 130, so I got about 20 pounds of inertia. There we go. We'll do the other side now. My name is Gerald, I'm the shop supervisor here uh, at Reflow Solutions, small family owned business. What you're looking at here is a STR uh, out of a Cummins. We're gonna cut it open. That way we can inspect it to see if there's damage, if there's, if there's any death fluid buildup. We can flow it, test it, bake it, and then we can weld it back together. The heat shield's usually on, so what I did is I cut the, the welds off the heat shield. I'm gonna pull the heat shield off, and then what I'm gonna do is get a cut here and a cut here. That way we'll get access to the two cores that are inside. All right, let's get started. I just make score lines here to, so when we weld it back together, we'll know where to put it. So here we have the two cores that are inside the SCR. Some of them come with one core, and this particular one comes with two. The SCR is supposed to just keep the knocks down, and it'll just fill with ash. I will try cutting this side now. And there you have it. The reason I cut two cuts on this side is because this has like a little gate and you can't stick the air hose in it. It'd be harder to clean. If you're cleaning the DOC and DPF, you'd want to clean the SDR too. Most people just want everything cleaned so they so have a clean system when they put it back in. But for example, so this is a DOC, this is a DPF, and this is the SCR. This is the outlet of the, the DPF and you can see this black here. I did the pin test. You just stick it in, because it, it'll go to the end of this side. It won't go all the way through, but it'll go to the bottom. Uh, usually if it's fractured, it will stop like up here. So you'll know the intern of the walls are broken. In this case, it could be that it's so plugged that it's going through and it got all this black. So this one, that's why you would bake the SCR. Okay, so that's the SCR part. I'll be weighing it, flowing it, uh, and then pre-cleaning it in the blast cabinet here before I put it in the oven. So everything that comes today before I leave, I will put in the oven. So the next day we can clean it, do the paperwork, get all the gaskets and clamps ready, and then go deliver it. It weighs 31, 138. So that's the flow. So I thought 2.2. If we restrict the flow, it will go up. So if you think of the DPF, the more soot that's in there, the higher that, would, that number will be. And that was 135. And that's it for the SCR. So this and these are together. So this is the DPF. This side will always be black. This side would always be white. So 220. And the weight is 3824. If this side is ever black, uh, it could be one or two things. Either it's so plugged up that it's coming through the, the sides or through the walls, or it's fractured. Uh, nine times out of 10, they're fractured. <laughs> Here's a perfect example. The same filter, the outlet, outlet, this is black. This is 100% no good. Can you kind of see the light? If you see a light, that means it's fractured, so it's no good. So it's not really doing its job of trapping the soot. So all that soot that's supposed to be getting trapped in here is literally just going right through it. And then now that this is done, I would just put it up here and then move on to the next one. 
So this one, we think it might be fractured because there's soot on the outlet. If it is fractured, I'm gonna put it in the blast cabinet, do a pre-clean, get most of the stuff out to see if I can see the light. If I can't see the light, we're just gonna bake it and then probably be able to see the light to see if it's fractured or not. If it is fractured, we gotta let the customer know right away so we can get him back up and running on the road. So you wanna put the inlet side facing down so when we're blowing it, all that soot is coming out and it's getting sucked into the dust collector. It's still gonna be black until after we bake it. It doesn't have to be perfect, just get majority of the stuff out, and then once we bake it, uh, you'll get the rest of the stuff out. I pre-cleaned it in the blast cabinet to get most of the stuff out to see if I can see if it's fractured. So that's what we're doing here. We're gonna do the light test, see if we can see any light. So now, yeah, so it's fractured. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but in this, between my fingers, for sure, it's fractured because you can see the white light. Once you know it's fractured 100% and you know for sure, there's no point of doing any of this. Yeah, so in this case, because it's fractured, we gotta let them know right away so they can make a decision whether they wanna get a new one or not and move forward. So for this one, the customer is being informed, so he most likely will buy a new one. And then now, I just pre-cleaned the DPF and now I'm gonna load it in this oven. Then what we do now is close the door. Okay, and it's OEM, quarter right, okay. All right, everything's loaded, it's ready to go. It's gonna bake tonight and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Now here's Keith, he's gonna show how to change a track adjuster on an excavator. Pay attention young bloods, he's a wealth of knowledge. We're gonna need to split this track. I know you guys probably don't have a track press, so we're gonna do this manually with a pin driver and a sledgehammer. The uh, pin is locked in there, it's not moving, so we're gonna have to bring the torches out and we're gonna have to add some heat to it. Usually you wanna use a striker, I don't happen to have one on me. So we're gonna get this side nice and hot. We're gonna go back to the other side, get some more heat into the other side because it'll have cooled down a little bit. Six. Here we go, now she's started to split, but there's a bit of tension on this track. Pin is halfway out. So I'm gonna use the excavator. I'm gonna use the arm and I'm gonna push that idler all the way in now. Okay, now we gotta pound the pin the rest of the way out. It should be out far enough that it may fall now. And then we can try and drive that track pin out the rest of the way now. Now this pin is gonna be hot, so just put it somewhere safe for it to cool down. Now that the tracks are split, we're gonna fire the machine up, and if we back it up a little bit, it'll bring the top part up on top and out of our way. And get a bar in here and slide it out like so, and then if you drop the bar down into the track beneath, you can use that as leverage. Looks like it's basically out all the way, but let's see if I can lift it. This is our track adjuster idler assembly. So the next step is we get the new track adjuster assembly bolted to the idler. We can slide it back in. Now 
Now the reason we're changing this track adjuster is because you can see the spring is actually broken here. So that track adjuster is basically scrap. There's no point in rebuilding it. The labor costs more than just replacing it. Now I do Loctite these bolts. You can use red or blue. You don't have to use Loctite if you don't want to, but I use it as a bit of a safety measure. If you really hate the next guy that takes it apart, you can use some green Loctite. And we broke the adapter. That's what you get for using Chrome instead of Impact. So now we have an Impact Universal. We'll see if we can break the Chrome socket. Don't worry, if you have a Milwaukee gun, you won't break the uh, Chrome uh, extension. <laughs> <laughs> it's going. Look at that. To the moon. I want to take you to the moon and back. So get on your back. All the bolts are out. Oh, that's so good. I'm on the edge. Who's singing Katy Perry? Are we singing Katy Perry now? What do you got against Katy Perry? What's wrong with Katy Perry? You think she watches our channel? 100%, just for you. Hi, Katy. <laughs> What's up, Katy, my lady? Oh, baby, you're a firework. Wow. Yuck. So it stuck that in my fing hole. You guys don't all have to watch. I'm sure there's plenty of shit to do. We're waiting for you now. Oh, f my beans. Oh, <laughs> straight through my soul. I think I'm gonna buy a hydraulic torque wrench. I don't do like Rotex often, but now I'm thinking like, oh, if I get it, I'll just use it for shit that I don't even like, like these. Like I don't really need it for these, but it would be nice. Especially if it's like one guy out there doing it. Well, if he doesn't want to gain weight, then I'll have to get one, right? Yeah. That's fucking NASCAR, baby. Wah! Hey, come help me torque this. Please. Tickety clap. Getting tired? No. No, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> tired at all. Woo! Oh, wow. Almost done. Home stretch. Oh, fuck, I forgot the sun gear. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you saw it in there. You saw it in there. Last one. Okay. We're ready to uh, line that yep. swing up. Well, Let's get him to boom up first and try just the finagle. Yeah. Like we got both tracks running. He can put that down in the ground and then, yeah, and then yeah. move the tracks. Yeah, Let's try that first. Yeah. Yeah, both sides are good. Shadow puppets. Yeah. <laughs> we got to wiggle more. It won't move by the bar. We're just wiggling it. To line up the bolt holes. Just because it's out a little bit. It's coming. It's, it's almost in. So, until this thing's done. Success. Now we get to put all these back in. Yeah, pretty much done. We just got like a few little tiny things. We're just gonna do a service on it, which you guys have seen enough can filter changes to last you the your life. So, all minor stuff, all boring stuff. The fun part is done. Now to reflow. Welcome back, guys. Today we got the SDR in here. We took the other ones out. We finished that, and this is what I'm working on today for CNBC for their buses. So for this, we're gonna weld it back together, basically put it back to the way it was.
and now it's welded. I'm gonna be putting the heat shield on. Once we got the heat shield on, it's, it's good to go to deliver it back. Once again, this is the process of a cut and weld of an STR. This is gonna get shipped back to the customer. My name is Gerald, I'm the shop supervisor here at Refo Solutions, and if you guys have any questions, let us know. You can sling this thing, use the excavator, lift it in. Give it a push with the excavator. All right, we know that that's all the way in now. Dead stopped. We can start to put the track back on. Now, this pin came out really difficult, so we're gonna polish the ends up a little bit, make it a little bit easier, a little bit nicer to install. We're gonna pull the track back on now. So we'll hook it up and get this pulled on. So now we have to get these two to line up. Now when you put this pin in, you don't want to hit it too hard with your sledgehammer on the end. You might mushroom it and then it's going to be impossible to get it all the way in. Okay, okay. We can use the track pin driver and the sledgehammer to drive it in the rest of the way. Now that the track master pin is in, the track is connected. We can lift that side up. We can put some grease, the grease valve back in, add some grease and adjust the track. To check the track tension, click the link in the description. Each make and model requires a different track tension, so refer to your manual. And that's how you replace a track adjuster on a 20 ton excavator. And to end it all, Keith's gonna show you how to replace a roller without splitting the tracks. Now you don't necessarily need to loosen the track. You can if you want. I'm gonna do it without loosening it. So here I'm high enough to get this off, no track tension on it. Try and loosen them up. So this roller is what we call a stub shaft, it's sticking out the back. Clear the dirt out of the bore. Slide the new roller in. Until it bottoms out, we can install our bolts again. Make sure the bolts are nice and tight. Pull our bottle jack out and lower the track on. And that's how you replace an upper roller on an excavator. Space is a commodity in our city. Creating space is what this Komatsu can do for you. Red One has a special offer on this compact and powerful excavator for demolition jobs. Watch in action and see for yourself that this Komatsu is the right equipment for your next construction job. Give them a call at 604-706-1568. And don't forget to mention you watch Tecmo to get the special pricing. As a reward for those of you who made it to the end of the video, here's the details on our giveaway. Comment Rent One and the machine you would rent below. Take a screenshot of the comment as proof. Fill out the form in the description below and you've entered to win. And finally, here's Shay. Good morning, um, I'm from Shay O'Matney. I'm with uh, Taz Site Services. Uh, we're gonna be showing you how to demolition for the Rent One PC200 Komatsu.
watch the full demo video, head over to Rent One's YouTube channel or click the link in the description. We've just completed the demo. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks very much. For those of you asking, loot boxes are back, back in stock for a limited time only. Buy some merch. Hats, toques, beanies. Who calls them beanies? If you can't buy merch online, Josh D at forcehd.com. Send me what you want. I'll see if I can help you out. Hi, I'm Keith and I'm gonna, well, hold on. I'm still half asleep. <laughs> Too much McDonald's. <laughs> but there's, oh yeah. I never screw up a take. They call me the one take wonder.